ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير النبي اجتباه وهدى للعالمين ارسله ارسله الله بدين الحق ليظهر على دين كل ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وازواجه وذريته واصحابه والتابعين وتابعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد عباد الله اذكركم اياي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى اذكركم بقوله سبحانه وتعالى حيث يقول في القران الكريم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وذكركم اياي بالحفظ القران الكريم وسنه سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي احيانا بعد ما عماتنا واليه النشور we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this bounty that he has blessed us with and bestowed us with that he has given us the ability to live another day how many went to sleep last night aspirations of what they would do this morning but did not wake up today think about that for a moment when to add ni'mat allah la tuhsuha if you were to enumerate the bounties of your lord you would not be able to enumerate them alhamdulillah allah gave us life this day allah gave us life on this jumuah and as we understand that the one who praises jumuah from jumuah to jumuah then no sin will afflict him during that time alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah for the one that gave us the ability that with every step that is taken to the masjid as we made wudu in our homes that every step a sin is forgiven and a darajat is given to in the akhirah some of the scholars have said that even works with the rotation of the tire may Allah accept it amen Alhamdulillah 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 Brothers and sisters one of the things i want to start off this khutbah talking about here is a story that Ibn al-Khattab, I'm sorry, to his son, Ibn Umar, or to Ibn Umar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and his father. It says that he was traveling, and he was on the outskirts of Mecca, and he decided to test this young man, who was a shepherd. He came to this young man, and he said, will you sell me one of these sheep? He said I cannot sell you the sheep. He asked him why. He said because the sheep belong to my master. He said, "Well, where is your master?" He said, "My master is in another place, taking care of business and he asked me to watch over his flock." So Ibn Umar was testing him. He said, "Well, if you sell me the sheep, it is a winning situation for you it's beneficial for you it is beneficial for me you receive the money that's beneficial for you i receive a sheep that's beneficial for me and we tell your master that a wolf ate the sheep and he is none the wiser so the young man raised his head and looked at Ibn Umar and said fa ayn allah fi hadhihi tijara where is allah in this business transaction he said my master might not be here but allah is here my master may not witness this but allah witnesses this My master might not know what happened to his sheep but Allah knows what happened to his sheep. Allah knows what happened to his sheep 
فَأَيْنَ Allah fi هَذِهِ tijara. It's narrated that Ibn Umar, Ibn, uh, Ibn Umar began to weep. He began to weep. There are many examples that we can take from this. This is just, as we would say, a layman, an average person, a shepherd. But when that taqwa, that consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters the heart, it doesn't matter what is a person's rank, it doesn't matter what is a person's status. What matters is that they have cultivated taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. And taqwa is an interesting word because it comes from waqa, which means to ward off a blow to defend itself. So the scholars of the inner sciences say that your taqwa is to ward off the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do you ward off the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By removing those things which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is having the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are around people or when we are by ourselves. Which then brings us to ikhlas. So let's take a moment and ask ourselves this question. Allah, Where is Allah in my consciousness? Where is Allah in my heart? Where is Allah when I am making decisions that might involve the trust that I owe someone else? Allah. I can't tell you how many times I've had people come and ask, can you arbitrate between us? Because some sort of business transaction has gone sour. I asked, did you write a contract between the two of you? We did not. The longest verse in the Qur'an is about contractual relationships. But the fact that we are Muslim should be enough, shouldn't it be? Only if we lived in a perfect world with perfect iman. But there are other realities. There are other realities that come into play. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets these things up. But when there is consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all stages, then you have the response of this young man. It doesn't matter what type of benefit I'm going to give, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with me, it is of no value to me. What value is something that would bring the displeasure of my Creator? What value is something that will be a means to bring me to the hellfire on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? That's having a consciousness in every single breath that we take. In every word that we say to our children, to our spouse, to our friends, to whomever it is, that we are conscious of what we are doing. That's the reality. Because none of us are going to escape that ultimate reality when we're going to be asked about it. And that's what mas'uliya is in our tradition. Mas'uliya, mas'ul, from sa'ala, to be asked. Because every single one of us is going to be asked. So one of the sad realities in our time is that we work hard to cultivate social consciousness. Social consciousness is very important. And we cultivate it and we strive to cultivate it. We work hard to cultivate political consciousness as we just ended this election season, how much work and how much effort went in to cultivate political consciousness. We studied the work of scholars and listened to their lectures and tried to implement the things that they talk about all in the attempt to bring about a political consciousness. And yes, these things are important. And I'm not trying to belittle them in any way. But ask ourselves, how hard do we work to cultivate a conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How, cultivate, how hard do we work? Ibn Ta'ilah said something, Allah have mercy on him, said something very incredible. He said, I'm astonished by a person that when they are afflicted with a malady in their eye, that they rush to have it looked after and taken care of. 
because of all of the beauties they would miss. Being able to see their children, being able to see their spouse, being able to look at a beautiful sunset or all of the other beauties that come through the eye, he said. I'm astonished that that same person who has maladies in their heart for 40 years does not take an effort to cure that heart. What is lost if we lose our eyesight? And what is lost if we have a heart that does not have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We hear it all of the time. Make dua for so and so, they are sick. Make dua for so and so, they are sick. Are we making dua for so and so because they are sick and filled with ghibah? Because they are sick and filled with backbiting? Because they are sick and filled with lying? Because they are sick and filled with all of the maladies that are internal to us that cause what we're seeing externally? Because that consciousness is not there. And when a believer does not have the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything else collapses. If a believer is not conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everything else collapses. The first commandment in chronological order of the Qur'an, in the order that has been arranged, Ya ayuha nas, اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O oh, humanity It's amazing Allah is addressing يا أيها الناس and not just believers يا أيها الذين آمنوا He's saying يا أيها الناس O oh, mankind male and female rich and poor black and white whomever you are worship your Lord اعبدوا ربكم who has created you and created those who came before you and order that. What is the purpose of that worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Inna salatanha al wal munkar. That this prayer has a purpose. Its purpose is for what? To protect us from lewdness and other things. having this consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is it that I will act one way when I'm in my prayer and act another way when I'm outside of my prayer? Or act one way when I'm with a certain group of people but act another way when I'm with another group of people? Because I want you to think of me in a different manner, be it positive, but yet then when I have an opportunity to take a benefit for myself, I'm looking for every means to take that benefit to myself, irrespective of what the outcomes were. Why? Because as he said, when the consciousness is not established in our hearts, then everything else around us will collapse. And we know the answer to this. There's no need for us to continue searching and asking why. But this worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we're talking about, requires awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we stated, فَأَيْنَ Allah. Because if it's just some sort of ritualistic motion, when I took my shahada, there was a young man, an older man, may Allah have mercy on him, his name was Chodabai in South Africa. He said, Dawood, don't pray the salat of a chicken. I said, what is the salat of the chicken? He said, up, down, kiss the ground, out of town. No consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it actually mean to me when I raise my hands and I say, Allahu Akbar? What does that mean to me in my life? What does it mean to me when I leave that salat and return back to my job or return back to my other responsibilities? That it carries over from that time in everything that I do, in every breath that I will take, in every blinking of my eye. That's the consciousness that we want to be working towards because that is what people will be attracted to and that's what people will see will make you different as a human being as you walk on this earth. That's the distinguishing factor. We can continue to compete in wealth. We can continue to compete in political status. We can continue to complete in whatever it is. 
but there will always be someone with more than you. ألا لا فض للعربي على الأجمي ولا للعجمي على العربي ولا لأبيض على الأسود ولا لأسود على الأبيض إلا بتقوى الله. The Prophet ﷺ said in his farewell sermon that there is no higher ranking, if you will, of the Arab over the non-Arab, or the non-Arab over the Arab, or the white over the black, or the black over the white, except for taqwa. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can judge that. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what that is. It's not about intellectual capacity, it's about the capacity for this heart, this consciousness to be cultivated and brought forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nowhere, then our servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nowhere. It's about fundamentals at this moment, in my opinion. To go back to these basics. Because we are far away from these basics. And we're ready to jump on anyone else's bandwagon. Uncritically. Without assessing the nature of that movement in light to Islam. You hear what I said right there? This is about Muslims looking to engage and be accepted and be a part of and participate in things which are the antithesis to you being a Muslim. Why does that happen? Because we don't think that we have something to offer to people. Because we don't think we have something to offer to people. During the Thanksgiving break, I took a group of my students and I asked Imam Khad Latif, who many of you may know from NYU, to bring a group of his students. And we went to Standing Rock in North Dakota. And we joined in there. And I joined in because the call that the Lakota Sioux had put out to people was, join us in prayerful protest. Occupy Wall Street didn't ask to join in prayerful protest. Black Lives Matter movement is not asking you to join in prayerful protest. That's dealing on a material plane where the divine is not a part of the program, the protest. The Lakota Sioux offered their prayers every day unapologetically. And thousands of people joined with them who were not Lakota Sioux. So I asked my students, do you think as Muslims that we could galvanize, that we could rally people, that we could bring people together to join us in a cause that is ours, which, yes, addresses the things politically, or addresses the things socially, or addresses the things in whatever sphere it is, but is based on, predicated on, a foundation that is based on the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. Because if you want to engage this system materially, you are fighting against a system that your Prophet ﷺ has described that this is their Jannah. How would you fight for your Jannah? What means would you go to if your Jannah was to be taken away from you? If there was something that was seen that was going to cause you to lose that? That's the same reality, that is the same light that you have to see what is happening here. And if you want to engage materially, then you can see the outcomes that we have been seeing over and over and over and over again. And what I said to my students was that this is how I see it. Umar al Khattab radiallahu anhu said, Nahnu qawmin a'azna Allahu bil Islam. Wa man yabtagi ghayr al Islam izza adallahum Allah. That we are a people that Allah has honored, that Allah has dignified through Islam. And whoever seeks that honor and that dignity and that status, outside of the means of Islam, then they will be debased. 
don't have to be a rocket science to figure out what's going on. If it's all about placards and rallies, and it's all about getting a voting block, and it's all about all of these things, devoid from and divorced from having a similar type of calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we'll continue to have the outcomes that we have. And we should be embarrassed to ask why. As a believer, we should be embarrassed to ask why. This is a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaving us to ourselves. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a part of this program, or it is some sort of afterthought, like a tafadda. Like a tafadda. Go ahead. Go ahead. We keep seeing it over and over again. And one of the things that we have to think about is that this idea which is called tahqiq al ubudiyah it's actualizing our servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actualizing in our life, in our heart, the reality and the fact that we are servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most perfect human being, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, actualize this reality more than anyone else. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors him. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about him, he took him to a place where no other human being had been taken to. Talking about Isra' wa Miraj. And how does he describe that? Subhanallah, the Asra bi Abdihi. Min al Masjid Haram, min al Masjid al Aqsa, Allah the Barakna Hulahu. But look at the term I want to say here. He says, Glorified is he, is the one who has taken his servant, his Abd. His Abd. He has taken his servant. So this is about our servitude. And he, honors, and he honors him by saying that again when he says, Alhamdulillah, Nabi Anzala ala abdihi al kitab. So, this idea that I'm a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, and all of those things that will happen otherwise come out of my understanding and my commitment to my servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I asked my students when we were there, Have any of you? In sujood, when calling on Allah Taala to end this pipeline, if you see that it is not beneficial, but then also having the other side to say that we are not people that can say that there is some sort of loss if this thing happens, because why the qadr is with Allah Subhanahu Taala. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, it's from a hikmah that he knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from a hikmah that he knows. I've been thinking about this election. And I thought about it in two ways. Or I thought about one thing twice. How many of us make dua, Allahumma la tusallat alayna bi dhunubina man lam yukhafika wa la yarhamuna. Oh Allah, do not place an authority over us Some, because of our sins. Someone who doesn't fear you or will not have mercy on us. So I asked about this. I thought about this. And I thought of two things. One, that either the present elect is not that person or two, that we make du'as and our du'as are not answered. And if our du'as are not answered, we have a whole laundry list that we can go through of why our du'as are not answered. So we have to ask ourselves some real hard and tough questions. And then it made me think about for Musa there is Fir'aun. For Ibrahim there is Nimrud. For the Prophet ﷺ there is Abu Lahab. For a hikmah that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And look at the outcome of all of those situations. Allah is Al-Hakim, Al-Alim, Al-Khabir. The question is, do we trust that? إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل الله ومن يضل فلا هادي له وشرون لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
فشروا أن سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آله سيدنا إبراهيم إنك أنت حميد مجيد عباد الله وذكركم بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم بقوله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقال في الحديث اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وذكركم بشرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد كما بارك وصليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آله سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I want to close briefly, inshallah, just the following statements here, inshallah, that we have to, in this, uh, yani, our servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we, that we are cemented, or we cement ourselves to the divine command it's sweetness and it's bitterness. That's the reality. That's the reality of the world that we live in. That's why I find it interesting that when there is a te- an attempt in this world that, that, that we want to rid it of the things that we find you know, that are harmful to us, or, or yes, we'd like to see a world that doesn't exist, but this is not that place. This is not that place. So this idea of trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This idea of trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just sharing with you here. Not being these people that if we perceive that this world is falling around, falling down around us, that we become a people that are saying, you know, why is this happening to us? I get that. People are asking, why is this happening to us? Does, aren't, we, aren't we Allah's servants? Aren't we, aren't we supposed to promise all of these things? The answer is yes, it absolutely are. And absolutely this is the way it's supposed to be happening. For a hikmah that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And look at this example. When we have an actualized reality of what it means to be the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these are the types of things that happen, these are questions that are asked. But when the Prophet, when the Prophet when his world, if you will, was collapsing around him, he's being stoned and ridiculed in Ta'if, when the imbeciles and the children were unleashed against him, spitting on him, stoning to him, and then he stands with his sandals, as we said, beating him with his sandals, what did he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh Allah, if this is happening to me, is not a sign of your displeasure, then I don't care. For la ubali. If all of this is happening to me, ya Allah, and Trump is president, and all of these things that may, may happen, may happen, we have no idea that they will, if anything of this happens, and you are pleasing me, for Allah, for la ubali. I could care less. But if we're scared of some of our dunya being taken away from us, if we're afraid of some of these realities that may happen, then it's going to be a different reality. But it's not ours from the beginning. That's where we tricked ourselves. It's not ours from the beginning. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wealth. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's home. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's family. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's status. It's all that He's just honored you with. And if we show gratitude, then Allah will increase us. And that increasing may be in a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala greater and stronger than any of us could ever imagine. That's the example of the Prophet Islam, born in this month and we hear the seerah and the mold and all of these other things that are happening this month but to reflect on the realities and how we can put them into our lives. But if this is happening to me it is not a sign of display there. And I'm afflicted with this humiliation and ridicule and this insult is being, of being spat on and stoned and chased out and abused is not a sign of you displeasing me, then I don't care. And I'll take it as long as I keep being, being a pleasure, as long as I'm still in your loving gaze, as long as my relationship has not been diminished. Then I don't mind what the world heaps upon me. I don't mind what the world heaps upon me if I still have my relationship with Allah. 
Fajr is still Fajr, Bor is still Bor, Asr is still Asr, Maghrib is still Maghrib, Isha is still Isha. We still have to make Hajj, we still have to fast in Ramadan, we still have to pay our zakat. No one is taking that away from us. No one is taking that away from us. Allahumma alhamdulillah mu'minina wa mu'minat. And muslimina wa muslimat. And ahay minhum al amwati ya rahman rahimin. Allahumma fiqha wa ibatu hibu tada ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma kun ma'ana wa la tukun alayna abdan ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma radna ladinik radan jamilan ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma fiqna fuq al-ard wa tahl al-ard wa yumna kun bani yadayk ya rabbil alameen. عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بعد وإحسان ويتائد القرباء وينحل الفحشاء والمكر البغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله